And there we go. We are live to our first unfiltered. Wait, am I not live? I think it's live. Right. This webinar is now streaming totally live. live. <laughs> What's happening? It's so oh, fun. Now we're live. No, no, we were live before. Now we're live. Everyone, hi. Welcome to uh, Unfiltered Wine Live, whatever we're calling this raw, <laughs> unfiltered with Sarah Tuttle Singer. Uh, Sarah. Uh, it's it's very nice to have you. I'm Adam Bellos, the CEO of the Israel Innovation Fund. You can refer to me as the guy with the ridiculous facial hair tonight. This is <laughs> Tara Tuttle Singer, uh, Israeli American commentator extraordinaire, uh, who has been a voice for many English speaking Israelis for the last, I would say, seven years. She has a uh, very well selling book out called Jerusalem Dawn and Quartered. And you just had a new book published, correct, with Rabbi Creditor? Yes, Rabbi Menachem Creditor and I compiled essays from and prayers and poems from all over the world, from the United States, from Israel, from Australia, the UK, even Sweden was, you know, in the house in South Africa, from uh, stories about folks as they were navigating, as are navigating the, um, the, the perils and pitfalls of COVID-19. The difficulties, the challenges, and, and also the humorous and the uplifting moments. And so it's an incredible volume of stories. And every uh, every single dime, shekel, whatever, all the proceeds go to COVID-19 relief in New York through UJA. And Menachem Creditor has just done such an amazing job making he's the scholar. He's the scholar in residence at UJA. He's the scholar in residence. Right. He's a terrific rabbi to follow on Facebook. He has beautiful commentary every day, sometimes with music, always thoughtful, always kind, compassionate. And he really is someone who understands the big picture and knows how to bring in people from all backgrounds and all walks of life. And so it's, it's a terrific book. It's called, um, you know, When We Turned Within, Reflections on COVID-19, and it's available on Amazon, on Kindle, and also, um, the, you know, an actual hard copy as well. And we're hoping to get copies here in Israel too. So. And so is your other book available on Kindle and Amazon mm -hmm. and hard copy and paperback. It's like in its fourth <laughs> edition, right? I, th I think it's in its third, actually, Jerusalem Drawn and Quartered in, in its third edition. And if you're missing Jerusalem, for those of you who are you know, outside of Israel and haven't made it to the old city in a while and have that longing, which is hard to avoid, it's, um, you want, if you want to pick up a copy, there's photos in it and then there's stories from all different quarters of the old city and from um, many different perspectives of this incredible sea of faith and peoplehood. In, in Sarah, I, I, have a, I have two questions to ask you. Sure. Where, where are you and what are you drinking? Right now, um, I'm actually on a, so, so there's like, this is a meta answer. So my virtual background, where I am in my heart is the, is the Glen Whiskey Bar in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It's this terrific little bar over on Shlom Tzion. We have 500 different kinds of scotch available. Where is it? On Shlom Tzion? Yep. Where? Um, 18 Shlom Tzion. They've got Irish whiskey. They've got bourbon. They've got so many different kinds of single malt. And they've got, really, it, it's just, it, it's a work of art there. And you go in. You and I, we grew up with roughly the same music, right? So yeah. Like 90s yeah. music? I, okay. So you, we're 10 years, we're, what, seven years apart? So, yeah. I mean, like. Yeah. Yeah. So, music. so we, um, since so the music in there is all the best hits of the 90s and, oh, God, and, the that's great. 80s and, it, and they make great hamburgers and it, it's, um, it, it has this, this like Hamish dive bar feel and yet the selection of scotch is unparalleled. And so I it's love so, it. And it's, that's it's my virtual so, background. It, it's so absolutely impossible. You, you, do you know how I judge a good bartender in Israel? How do you judge a good bartender? Easily, if they tell me whether or not Jack Daniels is bourbon. <laughs> that, 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 that's why, that's the first judge. Then is if they know how to make an old fashioned. But, okay. but if, they, if they try to call Jack Daniels bourbon, I I just write, I write them off. Because yeah, you know, it, it, it took a really long time for whiskey to become popular in Israel. Mm -hmm. Like a but, really, but it has. Time. It yeah, has. It, it, the milk the and honey boom. distillery and uh, yeah, no, it, the whiskey boom definitely came to Israel just late. It's, it's wonderful, and you know, I, every so often I dream about going to Scotland, and but until then, there's the Glen Barn over on Shlomzion, and it's uh, I, I highly recommend it. So that's where I am on my virtual background, but physically, I'm sitting on a moshav 
in the middle of Israel, not too far from Rehovot, and I just learned because of you and because of Wine on the Vine that around the corner, 10 minutes walk away, is this fantastic winery. It's uh, the Hertzberg Winery. I'm sorry, my virtual background is going to mess up the yeah. shot. But, uh, there you go, wait. There you go. We're not drinking the same thing. thing right now. And it's, it's beautiful. And this is, now I'll tell you the truth. I know my scotch really well. I can tell my space side from my island, from my highland and lowland. I know, you know, the smoky, peaty, smooth, creamy, but wine, I'm learning. I'm starting to learn wine, but you I do know. know many wineries near you and you don't even know it. You live in the in the, uh, you live in the municipal region of Gezer and there's mm -hmm. more wineries there than anywhere else in the country. I'm glad I, I see this is, I'm thrilled I'm here because I just learned something new. I, and that's one of the fun things about talking with you. Whenever we speak. Oh, thank you. I always learn something new. Where, so I, 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 but I'm loving, I'm loving this. I'm, it, it, uh, it is. It's really good. You can get it on our store, uh, Israel Wines for 80 shekels. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and it's, uh, it's 30, $35, I think, in our American store. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely one of the better wines for your dollar in terms of the quality. But also, he only makes 5,000 bottles a year. He does it on his own. Like, he was a biochemist. Like, the approach to winemaking is totally different. He's also, like, the wine is organic. Like, it's completely mm -hmm. organic and vegan. Like, he mows the, the vineyard every day. Guys, like, in his it's 80s. It's a beautiful vineyard. I was there just as the sun was going down and it hit the leaves. It was absolutely stunning. And it's, I could smell a big tree. I, off I, I love how you just painted the picture because I know. <laughs> because, exactly. no, I, was, I was so happy. See, I, I like experiential. It's living. that's the place. That's the, yeah. He, he really, he, it's the room. Every time we do an event, we have so many pictures of couples making out in the vineyard. <laughs> like, and they're really, they're really great advertisements. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's, uh, do you like living out there now? You, you've moved I, I around. do. I just want to say one more thing about Max Hertzberg, oh, the, the owner of the, 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 of the vineyard. He told me something so cool. He, you know, he told me about his background in science from Weizmann Institute. And I said, oh, you know, th did that help you become, um, with your winemaking and he said well no winemaking is more of an art but when something goes wrong because of my science background I know why it goes wrong and then he's able to correct the mistake but this this wine is absolutely gorgeous you know, you know his son the, his son Yoel who's a good friend of mine as well whose mm -hmm. best friends was one of my best friends and that's how we know each other he's the set designer for Tehran right now very cool yeah, it, like it's a very cool family, and it's a family business, and it's like he's an old from France, mm -hmm. you know. Like it's and it's it's kind of interesting seeing somebody who's been here forty years and seeing where they've gotten. When you know, I think we've been here for about the same amount of time, about 10, 12 years, right? When did you you moved in, you moved in two thousand seven here, right? No, two thousand ten. Oh, October. so it was like yeah, it was the same time. You're ten years, yeah. So it's 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 rewarding to see that time allows you to succeed in this country and yes. and, and uh, it's 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 nice to know that if you stick it out especially with somebody like you know learning from max you can be very successful in this country if you if you mm -hmm. work hard enough time and optimism too i think in order to be here you have to okay you need your dose of cynicism because they're, they're stuck to look at a stance all the time mm -hmm. but then you also have to kind of throw yourself into the mess of it and, and have faith that it's gonna be okay with hard work, like as Max did, as you're doing, as so many different Olim from all different countries and backgrounds and walks of life are doing. And it, it, it really, this country is such a work in progress. And I think it's because of that spirit that makes it so, and that gives me a lot of hope. It's, it's, it's interesting, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are starting to make Aliyah, and I know this from looking at the real estate market because there's a lot mm -hmm. of people that are starting to buy up homes. And I'm very interested to see in the, over the next couple of years how the country changes because of that, because there are certain things that many of the Western immigrants will not put up with here. And, and just like the Russian Aliyah, you know, it provided massive social change for, uh, for this country, same with uh, all the Mizrahim in the 1950s. Uh, it, I'll be interested to see what 
the Anglos bring to the table in terms of what we will, we'll just complain until we get what we want. I, 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 I can't even imagine, do you know what I'm saying? I can't imagine, like think about like the amount of things that like our community is able to get done in this country. It's quite, quite interesting. If you look at like us as immigrants, could you imagine if we were double the size? I, no, I, I'm curious to see what that kind of <laughs> I don't know if I want us to be like, double. Like, is, you know, if, if President Trump is reelected, does this mean that liberal Jewish Americans are going to leave the United States and move to Israel? I, I, I doubt it, but I, I'm sure a few will. Or are we going to see more, um, you know, Orthodox Jews coming in. I, it's going to be an interesting mix of folks. Yeah, I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll be and different opinions. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with that. What kind of conversation comes from that? Can you can you imagine what type of conversation it's going to be? You know what? I, I can tell it's you be that it'll be a lot of yelling and screaming and whining. That's what it's going to be. No, but you know what? It'll be done over a good bottle of wine or scotch. It'll be done at, at Bodega, uh, the sandwich place in Tel Aviv, the kosher sandwich place run by James. Oh, God, or, God. You know. They're a bless. Them in the pickle jar are the best, like, blessing. Oh, man. Have you had the pickle jar yet? No, I haven't. You haven't had the pickle jar yet? Okay, this guy is my neighbor. Okay, and uh, Jake, Harriet, and he, uh, he, he had, like, a debilitating accident before he made Aliyah, and he recovered and then made Aliyah. I apologize for the outside noise. I'm coming to you from the roof of the Israel Innovation Fund's headquarters in Yafos. That's fantastic. I, I have a dog. And there, the there is a, a search helicopter right now with a spotlight flying over Yafo for some reason. I apologize. Are they me. looking for you again? What did you do this time? Sarah, shh, do not <laughs> let on, please. I'm, 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 I'm begging you. Like, I, oh, <laughs> um, but he got into this debilitating accident. He started... Uh, out of like his loft that he lived in, which is like a ground level loft, um, dilling pickles and like fine cucumbers and like really, really good cucumbers in Israel. And now he does flavors like o Oyster Bay and like shawarma flavored. And, and he's oh. got all different types of cucumbers that he uses as well. And he delivers and he's got a storefront and it's, it's awesome. Like, you know, pickles are so big here. Did you ever see the movie Crossing Delancey? It came out in the 80s, and it was a movie that was nostalgic for the Lower East Side of the 1940s and the 1950s. Okay. But And now people watch it in 2020 and are nostalgic for New York of the 80s, being nostalgic for the 1940s and 50s. But Didn't, one of the main characters- the very unsafe in the 80s? Pardon? Wasn't New York like really unsafe in the eighties? Completely, yeah. completely. But through the lens of nostalgia, you know, it, it changes. And uh, anyway, it's a, it's a great movie, and it's about a woman who's sort of on the on the edge of wanting to be an assimilated Upper West Side Jewish American, and her buddy who lives in the the Lower East Side. You just cross okay. the land to get to the neighborhood. But there's a pickle guy. That's why I'm. I'm sharing this. There's uh, a there's a there's a pickle movie a coming pickle out with Seth Rogen. There's always a pickle. No, always, you, and this guy, he's, he's a gorgeous pickle guy. He's one of the, the leads. He's the uh, romantic one of the romantic leads. Did, did you see the uh, trailer for the new pickle thing that Seth Rogen is doing? Mm -hmm. It's it's actually quite good. It's about a uh, early 20th century uh, Russian Jew that immigrates to America and he gets frozen in the state. Oh, like, I heard about this. I yeah. heard it's oh. and, and so he wait he wakes up to find his his like descendant in America that he must have impregnated his wife before he he disappears and dies or whatever. And Seth Rogen plays both characters and like from the uh trailer that I saw it was great and it looks like he does a great job too. And it's it's a real like heritage thing because the 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 ancestor is very religious. He's not like the ancestor calls him out for like being a loner and not have, it's the typical thing, but it looks very good. Like uh, I'm very impressed with him lately. He makes some great stuff and he does that hilarity for charity thing, which is fantastic. I'm going to check it out. I've heard good things about it. And I saw the, one of the promo pics where it really looks like an old time picture. They did really did a good job on the CPS. Yeah. They, that, that old picture went around like crazy because they said it was so authentic. So what's going on with Sarah? What's this like right now? You, you, you're, you're the voice for many, many people. The Times of Israel has been covering COVID since obviously the beginning. You've had kind of like a different eye on everything because you're, 
you're more up to date than most of us in terms of like the actual like current events going on minute by minute. Like how has this like changed you in any way? This has been a lot of time with your kids. Like, you know, what, what has this been? <laughs> No, no, but truthfully, I, I've been, um, <laughs> I, first of all, I didn't break, I didn't bake bread during COVID-19 as many people did, but I did eat more chocolate chip cookies. You know, Times of Israel has been really covering the COVID-19 crisis from the, the, its nascent days, when the first stories were coming out of China, really from the beginning, and following along with the news, and my job is to make sure that the articles go out on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and are read, it is, um, it, it's not easy. Knowing everything that's being covered in the news can be exhausting and, and a little emotionally debilitating. And there were, it has not been an easy period. The, the lockdown wasn't easy. And on the one hand, there were beautiful things that came from it. I did spend more time with my kids. I feel like I was able to get back some of those days I had missed from their early babyhood when I was so anxious all the time. And so there was that blessing, but at the same time, there was also the anxiety around COVID-19 that just never left that sweet spot in the back of my neck. I could just feel it physically. And, um, but I'm, some really special things came during it for me during this time. I'm, I miss my family incredibly. I imagine that you and others who have family on the other side of the world must feel similarly. And I don't know when or, or if I'll see them again, but we, we've made it a tradition how to have weekly Zoom and we're on for two, sometimes four hours Sundays. And it's one of those things where you know, one of us will sign off at, um, you know, after two and a half hours of being on this family Zoom conversation, and then we'll sign back on because it's the Jewish goodbye and we'll stay for another two hours. And it's incredible. So I'm spending more time with my family in America than I've spent in years. And I think that's really special. And my kids are able to spend time with their family in America more than they've ever spent in their entire lives. And so that's been absolutely wonderful. And I, I feel really, really lucky to have that. And that's been a tremendous support. Working with Menachem Creditor on this book, this collection of different voices around COVID-19 has also been a blessing. And um, reading the works of others, from the poems, to the prayers, to the humorous anecdotes, to the, the, the heartfelt you know, wailings of, of people in distress have been incredibly meaningful. And it's opened doors and windows for me out of the silo of my own despair. It helped me stay above water in a difficult storm. And then, you know, you, you read the news and you see, uh, you know, the cases went down for a while and you start to feel like, okay, maybe things are settling, but we should all wear masks. And then the cases rise because people don't. And we, um, we were too optimistic and, made some mistakes in my opinion and, and now we're we, we, we made some ridiculous mistakes it, 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 i'm i don't know about you but like i'm very disappointed like i'm i'm very i'm very disappointed like i'm not going to try to get too political but i'm very disappointed with like many world leaders in general right now i, I mean like and how the, the situation has been handled because it doesn't seem like there was any common sense approach taken and there was no no one country did it the same and everybody thought they were doing it best and even new zealand wound up you know they were like covid free and then it came back i, I think they did the best out of all of us but it, it's been frustrating to see a government not be formed and then be formed in the name of the epidemic but then it really has done nothing concerning the epidemic and like that has nothing to do with my opinion on any one individual. It's the, the idea as a whole. And I mean, like, I just can't understand. I really can't understand any global leader promoting the idea of not wearing a mask. And it's just, um, I don't, I don't get it. You know, I mean, like a lot of this has come down to everyone's self-control, you know, in terms of at least the decisions that we're making now. 
Um, and it's, uh, I would say it's been tough. Like to not, not in terms of like, oh my God, I can't handle this. But in terms of why is nobody stopping for two seconds right. to breathe? And Where say, are the grown right. I want to know, like, you know, I'm, I'm 39 years, I'm almost 39 years old and July 30th, I'll be 39. But you and, look 22. <laughs> um, but I feel this, this, you know, this hollow aching, you know, loss within me. And, I, and I'm looking around and it's like, who's taking responsibility here? Who are the adults in the room? And, and, and there are a few, you know, and I, I see, um, I, I see some voices in the wilderness and actually David Horowitz, the founding editor of Times of Israel is one of them. And I appreciate his voice tremendously, but I'm looking at our political leaders, not just in Israel, but around the world and with a you know, rare exception. The, you know, I think the prime minister of New Zealand has done a pretty great job. There just seems to be this lack of, of cohesion and I, I I imagine everyone is as scared and thrown by this as we are. I mean, it's something our brains haven't figured out how to process, but there are so, such simple things that, that we can do to help prevent the spread, and, you know, wear a mask, be mindful of our space and of the space of others, and, and just take that into consideration and, and remember that we are, that my health is your health and your health is your neighbor's health and your neighbor's health is, is someone else's health and we're, we're in this together. I definitely, I, I mean, that's easy to agree with. I mean, like, obviously, but I, I mean, even like for, for us, for example, if we would have maintained the lockdown for another two weeks and there would have been like some type of organized economic support for people, like there has been in many other countries we, we would be in a much safer place. There was also no rules about wearing a mask right after the lockdown. And, right. And they and weren't- And nothing was enforced. And, 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 and it was totally unacceptable because it allowed people to think like, I'm not gonna lie, I went out the first couple of days very liberally with my mask. Like I obviously walked with it like around my house, but like we were, we were obviously traveling and getting footage the second the lockdown ended so we were going into open areas where you know there weren't high exposure rates and we were still being safe even though i i would call myself more liberal right when the lockdown ended versus a week afterwards but mm -hmm. they, there was nothing like it was very disappointing i mean um people were very cavalier here as soon as the lockdown ended it was because they were so happy to get out but you know people needing to get their nails done and their hair done which which had a huge thing to do uh, with manicurists and hairstylists and barbers. I mean, the first thing I did was go to the barber. Obviously, <laughs> they, they wore masks over a mask. You had to like clean your hands. There, there was this whole thing. They couldn't do, you know, hot towels because everybody knows Adam Bellis has to go to the barber because he does things like this to his face when he doesn't. But like, it, it's, it was disappointing. It was very disappointing. And the yeah. numbers now are disappointing because they're talking about us going back to a lockdown. Hold on, I'm being told that we have a question. Great. Okay, what advice would you give us in the US? This is from Gail Doring. I hope I pronounced Gail, that right. Gail, I love, okay, I love Gail. Did I, did I pronounce Gail. it right, Doring? Yep. What advice would you give us in the United States who wish to bridge the gaps in race, religion, and world conflicts? How do we be our best? Well, there's a great question to start us off politically with a non-political organization. But go ahead, Sarah, take it. Can you repeat the question? No. Yeah, yes, of course. Please. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> this is a good one. I was so excited what, to hear Gail's name that I just. What I advice have. would you give to people in the United States who wish to bridge the gaps in race, religion, world conflicts, etc.? How do we be our best? And if anybody has any more questions, please feel free to send them in. That's a wonderful question. And hi, Gail. I miss you. I, I can't believe it was just. I think a few days ago, a few years ago, that we saw each other, our, our, our last meeting anniversary came up on Facebook, and it was so wonderful to see our photo together, and I can't wait to be in, in close proximity with you soon, um, one day, God willing. And, uh, okay, to answer your question, I think the most basic thing we can do to bridge these divides, and there's some pretty deep divides right now, and... Uh, 
there's a lot of tension, there's strife, there's frustration, and there's hurt and, and, and legitimate anger, we have to talk to each other. And it, it's difficult, but it's also very basic. We have to find ways to bridge the gap by speaking with people with whom we disagree. And it doesn't have to be a conversation where we, we jump right into politics. In fact, I really don't think it should. But I think we have to start with conversations about who we are, what interests us, what interests other people, the, the folks that we're speaking with, hear their stories and get to know them on a more intimate level as friends. And from that friendship can begin then another conversation and another and another. And then you start getting to the more difficult discussions, the ones that might trigger you, might upset you, might throw you off your balance. But by that point, because of the friendship that's already been established, you're more willing to listen. At least that's been my experience. And I spent two years living inside the old city. I lived in each of the four quarters and the Muslim, the Christian, the Armenian, and the Jewish quarters, and living within worlds that were very different from my own, and hearing stories from people that were incredibly moving, inspiring, and also extraordinarily challenging. And that's one of the lessons that I learned, that when you get to know somebody on that basic level of knowing that they're um, that their son plays soccer, and that they know that your daughter likes to draw, and that their wife has a rosemary garden, that you, you both enjoy a really good glass of scotch, that becomes the basis for future conversations that lead to the more difficult issues that need to be discussed and brought out into the open. I hope that answers your question. I was gonna say, just don't raise assholes, but yeah, sure, that, that's <laughs> too. <laughs> well, I think people, people are basically wonderful. People are fundamentally wonderful and fundamentally I, wonderful. I, <laughs> You, you, and, and then, and then people can also act like you know that you know that that I disagree with you on. <laughs> well, I, I have days where I think I'm doing the right thing, and you know, I'm, um, you know, I I feel that I I see the bigger picture, and then someone can just piss me off, and I can take a swipe at them because I'm human. I'm human. You're human. Folks watching this are human. Gail, Gail is the exception. She's perfect and wonderful, but we we all are. We all have our bad days. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. But you are know something, and, and I think that that I think this whole situation has helped a lot, which has been, you know, I was talking to my. We had a creative day here yesterday, which is I would say very unorthodox. I won't go into like what a creative day is here, but like it's a creative day, and like we came up with like some great ads for for the next couple of months, and I was talking about like what the difference is between holiness and like the goals of religion outside of like Jewish thought uh, mm -hmm. and other monotheistic like religions versus like what Jews practice. And I said, the difference is like, everybody's trying to get higher, like in everything else. And like, for us, it's about bringing what's high down below to create the, the perfect environment physically. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I, you know, this, this whole thing has really been a major test to individuals if they care about the collective. And, and I think that, uh, you know, I don't think everybody's that great, like to be completely honest. I mean, I think it's totally disrespectful what we've seen in America in terms of all the young people going to spring break and literally causing the resurgence that's going on right now. I think, I think this has shown a, us a lot about human character and about the way we need to raise the next generation. I mean, like, um, you know, I'm moving uh, right now at the end of this month, we're moving the office to, to near Shuka Carmel. And we, we were having some issues with our landlord here. I can't believe I'm telling the story, but you'll, you know, it's, it's pertinent. And I, I mentioned that when I got on the phone with our landlord or, or the gentleman who owns it, I guess his son runs the family business of all of these properties that they run. They, they live next to David Friedman in Herzliya. And, um, and I said, you know, your father gave me a 2000 shekel discount on the rent. And, and like for the size of our rent, because this is a very large space in Tel Aviv, it's a rooftop, it's an, it's an office, we can fit 200 people up here. Um, it really wasn't that much at all. 
you know, it was minute. And he sat there saying, I own properties all over this neighborhood. I go 15, he goes 15 here, 15 there. And I, I didn't give anyone a discount during Corona, how ridiculous it would be. And I was like, wait a minute. I was like, the entire economy's came to a halt. I go, whether you're working here or you, you work from abroad here and you're renting an apartment, I go, the, there was a pandemic, a global pandemic. Everything came to a halt and you didn't help any of these people that provide you a livelihood? And he wow. goes, no, he goes, no. And he goes, you should say thank you to me. And you should say thank you to my father for giving, and I'm like, He's a religious Hasidic Jew. And I, 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 I. I okay, so I take back what I said about it. <laughs> it's, it, it, it no, I, I mean, like, real, realistically, you know, I, I think this has shown us a, a, a lot of, um, it, it, I think it's shown us the best of people, and I think it's shown us the worst of people. Momo says hello. You know what, I, I, have to, I, I agree with that, actually. Um, like, uh, it's, this whole not wearing a mask thing, this whole, like, what, did science just did did we light it on fire and throw it out the window? I I I just don't I don't get it. Like, did you see the the video that went out uh, in Florida? People were protesting the masks, and the woman goes, "I I don't wear uh, a mask because the, for the same reason I don't wear underwear. Things got to breathe." Oh wow, that's uh, that's a lot to think about. That's a lot to think about. She said it in public okay, court. So you're you're making an important point, and. Yes, I think that especially now we are seeing sides of people that are really troubling, mm -hmm. not just in COVID, but also with what's happening in America with the uh, with the um, with the social protests and reactions to the social protests. And I want to actually, I'm thinking about this as you were talking about this this landlord, and it's it's appalling. The story is absolutely appalling. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And I, I want to go back to Gail's question and about bridging the divide. I think also along with talking to people, we have to use this time to as a period of our of introspection and, and speak with ourselves and and look at look within at our own values and be willing to question what we see within ourselves and then talk to others too as a as a way of, of bouncing back you know, those ideas around and seeing what um, what may need to shift within us. And it does feel like, and I still want to believe that most people are good, but I, it also feels like there is this movement toward circling the wagons on the one hand, and then other people who are reaching out and, uh, and trying to get beyond the confines of their own community to build bridges to other communities and to, to help people and to deliver food to, um, to folks who are struggling during COVID-19 and, and lowering the rents and, and uh, waiving bus fare or cab fare when, when they can. So we're, we're really seeing both. I don't think it matters whether or not the majority of people are good or they're not good. I think it just matters. I, I think really, you know, we built TIFF on this idea that you could make money and make money for other people and also at the same time provide streams of income to nonprofits and charities mm -hmm. and us being a charity itself and i called it altruistic capitalism you know when i like came up with it in its most like nascent form and like you know tiff has been evolving over the last couple of years and you know we're doing different things and the main concept was is that there needed to be a Jewish nonprofit Zionist organization that was built for the digital age by people our age so that it was relevant. And I think the ability, I think the big thing, you know, I, I've spoken to my cut now, last 30 days, no, but during the, the beginning of everything, I was speaking, like you said, to my family in the States, way more than usual, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that I think that the, uh, the the virtual ability that's being perfected right now, where you know we've now learned that international travel doesn't shut down the global economy; it's domestic travel, and the fact that you know technology is being produced that will allow us to be in multiple places at once, just like kind of we are right now. You know, we're both in where we are, but we're also both on Zoom. I, I think that that is going to give us the greatest potential to change for good, if that makes sense. 
And um, I, I also think the idea that our individual choices can affect the health of other people if it's instilled in the next generation correctly, uh, we could have a generation of non-assholes. Excuse my language. Sorry, mom. I know she's watching. Like, um, I think it's a, I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. I, I especially think it's a conversation that needs to be had in Israel. Um, I, I haven't lived in the States in a decade, you know, but I've spent probably in the last decade, I've probably spent more than a year there. Um, it's, um, I'm always optimistic about the future, especially of the United States and Israel, because no matter who's in office, it's very clear that the country usually moves forward ideologically, like not backward. Um, and you can see that now with many, many things going on both here and there. But I still worry about the idiots, like, if that makes sense. Like, um, and I still worry that when we don't choose to be our best selves, it has a, it has a great effect on the people around us. And I, think that's, uh, I don't think that's discussed enough. I don't think that the energy that, <laughs> that many people throw out uh, is realized, you know, especially people that are in the public right now. When do you feel like you're your best self? When do you feel like you're your best self? Can you do me a favor? I've had more than one glass. You need to finish your glass. This is supposed to be unfiltered. Like, oh, you think this is my first? That's cute. No, no. I know it's not your first. <laughs> well, I, I've been thinking about this question, so I, I'm going to throw it to you, and then and then I'll try to answer it. But I, you I want me to answer? I'm supposed to answer first. Mm -hmm. Go to hell. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, um, um, I can say that to Sarah though, and it'd be funny. Uh, when am I my best? I'll pour more if it makes. When am I? When am I my best self? It's very interesting. I can tell you right now that lately I've definitely been my best self, and I definitely feel that this um, that this um, this situation has brought out my best self. Uh, to be completely honest, um, I the first couple of days when this I can't believe I'm going to admit this. Very few people know this. The first couple of days that you know I know this, I lived in China. So I've been to these food markets that everybody was talking about in January, February, and March. And as soon as it became something that people, that it was talking about spreading, because I remember I was at my, my friend Jillian um, Goldberg's birthday party and somebody was trying to play it down. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like it's gonna be fine. And I was like, no. I was like, you have no idea what we're in store for. I go, if this is something like, and it, and it ended up not being, it was from the lab or whatever they've, this, who knows what they've decided now. I believe like it's confirmed that it's from the lab, not the food markets, but whatever. But as soon as I heard the food markets, I knew that this was serious because it's disgusting, those food markets. And the food in China is disgusting. And the way, one thing that I have a major problem with having lived in an actual communist country and listening to the way Americans complain about some of the things that they complain, also being five hours away from Syria during the entire civil war. I sometimes look at many Americans who are not expats who live in the mainland as whiny people because they, they have no idea how good they have it because the Chinese people all live in fear. And the Chinese government, the Iranian government, the North Korean government, and the Russian government are pretty much the worst things on this earth. And, and, you know, whether people realize it or not, you can be picked off the street by the government in China and you're gone and you disappear forever. Okay, that, there is a very big difference between anything going on in the United States right now and that. And um, the first couple of days, of this whole thing when like the lockdown was just beginning. Like the, I, I had my birthday on March 5th. It was the last time we had people over to the house. Then Purim started and the lockdown started. And I did not go out during Purim because they, you know, cases were starting to pop up. And I took this, uh, I can't believe we're talking about this. I hate you, Sarah. Um, I, I, I took this time to say to myself, this could like, like we have no idea what this is. And I, 
I tried to imagine the worst possible situation for myself, which would be death. You know, like, like, like the, the, you have no idea what this is. It could, I mean, they just discovered the bubonic plague in Malaysia, uh, which I think is, is there. I don't know if you've heard about that yet. Do you hear about that? It came out today. Yeah, it's, it's insane. And I said to myself, you know, what could be the worst thing? The worst thing would be, I would not survive a global pandemic like the 1917 Spanish flu. I'm a human being. I'm nobody special. Like I'm one of billions of people on this earth. So I took like two hours to meditate and like didn't want to get anxious about anything because I knew like, okay, if I'm going to confront death, I got to confront it mentally. And like just the idea of it allowed me to like think about what do I want to leave if, if I only have three months left, five months left, six months left, whatever. What do I want to make sure that Tiff will be able to do if that happens? Um, you know, and it, it allowed me a completely different perspective on everything because I kind of just saw where everything was going. And on top of it, I could tell that everything was being moved to digital and that was the organization that we have built. Mm -hmm. So for me, this brought out the best in me. It was how do I want to live every single last day of my life? You know, From then on, I was up at 5.30 in the morning. I was working out. I became a proficient jump rope person. Uh, it took me six weeks, but every day I woke up and for 30 minutes solid, I would just jump rope. And the first week was the most painful thing in my entire life. My legs hurt in places that I didn't know they could hurt. My calves appeared in a place that I didn't know my calf existed. You know, things like that. I, I think for me, I looked at it as this could either be an opportunity or it could be total chaos. And um, we made, as an organization, you know, and, and as, as, as a CEO, I felt like for me, this brought out the best uh, of me in terms of my decision-making process and the also the need to keep people employed for the sake of their livelihood. Right. And, and, and that was a very big thing for me. I did not want to fire anyone. And I had to, I, I didn't even pivot our organization that much. I just sped plans up for certain things. And, um, Listen, people had two choices uh, during this lockdown to utterly lose. Now, I'm, I'm also very lucky. I have an 80 square meter balcony to walk around. Okay, I can't imagine what it would have been like without an outdoor space. I have no idea. I can't comment. I didn't experience it like that. Um, but I, I had a choice. I could either enjoy the last few months of my life if I wanted to look at it like that, or I could sit and wonder when I was going to die and expire and whatever. I mean, like I lived alone, you know, my family's over in a different country and the only legacy I could have that at this age would be what I've somewhat begun to build. And, um, it brought, I, I, I mean, like this brought out the best of me and, and, and I wanted it to end every second, you know, I mean, like no one wanted to live like this. Um, what about you there? I'm done speaking. I'm so moved by what you shared. And as you were talking, it's it, a few things really, you know, hit me. It sounds like you I can't believe I, I can't believe I said that on the internet. I can't I'm, believe, that's what I did. Really, I'm, I'm touched and I'm honored to have heard what you said. And it was, um, it also helped me just in the, the few minutes that you were speaking. <laughs> Sorry. Apologies. That was the cutest <laughs> sneeze I've ever seen. <laughs> mouse in my nose it helped me shift my own perspective and i appreciate that and it sounds like you in many ways moved through the five stages of grief during that period of meditation and decided to come out the other side embrace the possibility of this is it and how do you make the most of it i think that's wonderful i um and i'm i'm very touched by what you've done who is that this is Momo, you know Momo. Hi, oh my goodness. He's just, he's a little jealous that I'm giving you all my attention right now. <laughs> very, very, very cute. So I, so, so thank you for what you shared. I'm, uh, Well, what about you? Where, when am I my best self? Um, yeah, when are you your best self? I'm my best self. Or a day. When I am, when I'm talking to people, when I'm hearing stories that move me. So right now, the story you shared gave me that rush 
of that wow moment that where, where you get goosebumps and you feel that this golden light fill you. When I hear interesting conversations um, b between strangers, you know, I, I'm not eavesdropping in a creepy way. You, I, I, I mean, like, like you're going to you're write a book eventually about all the experiences you have in cab. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm working on something now. I love talking to taxi drivers, and sometimes I hear stories that just blow me away and 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 move me to tears or or make me laugh. I feel like I'm my best self when I'm by the sea. When I'm when I'm in the water, when I'm with my kids out in the fields, um, when I'm when I'm learning something new, when, I, when I'm hearing music, when I'm with my family, and there have been opportunities for all of that in the last few months, and I'm excited to find more ways of finding those opportunities because they don't come as readily as they used to. So you kind of have to work for it. I like challenges, so that that works for me as well. And um, this, all of this, you know, the last few months have been incredibly challenging. And I, I like what you said, and I'm going to try to shift my way of thinking around the challenge and look for ways to, to build opportunities out of them. So I appreciate it. Appreciate what you shared. Thank you. No, I mean, there's obviously times where I'm my best self, but wow, oh man, the last last two months, like when I when I, when I came up with the Mile Chaim campaign, mm -hmm. like that I was on this high because being your best self is such a high, and and you can only be your best self when you're taking care of yourself, which is right. right. Like, like like you can't. It, do, you, do you want to know something interesting that I learned at Pardes when I did their their summer program? Um, when I made my yeah, like, or I, it was after the army or something like that. It was just like I, I did it for the summer because I, I had always wanted to learn there and they had great teachers. And um, Abraham could not connect to God for the last 38 years of his life, okay, after Sarah committed suicide. And it corresponds with the 38 years in the desert that the ancient Israelites spent during the Exodus, because there was no contact between the Israelites and God other than manna or the pillar of fire and the pillar of smoke. The only like interaction or messages went directly through Moses. So Wait a minute. Sarah committed suicide because yeah. they, they kind of that over and Wait, she jumped off her tent when she she heard god tell abraham to uh sacrifice isaac mm -hmm. and she didn't know that god stopped abraham from That's doing right. it and because uh because sarah was a greater prophet than abraham which is not heavily spoken about but she was more prophetic and had more prophecy and was a stronger prophet than abraham it's always been, you know, it's been a challenging reading for me to, to go from the Akedah, from the binding of Isaac, and then, and then literally the next chapter is, and in, in Sarah died, and these are the days of Right, and, they, so, and, they, so in the, and that's it, how they explain it? Huh, wait, hold on, J J Jacob Nair David wants to know our, my favorite lockdown line. I'm going to have to go the Zamim. Yeah, uh, the Jezreel Adumim there, Jacob. I gave you a great shout out because your, your wine is fantastic. Um, no, but uh, the reason why he couldn't connect to God was because he was depressed. Mm -hmm. And you have to be happy in order to receive prophecy, apparently. And uh, both of ours. Do you have a favorite lockdown wine or whiskey, Sarah? So much. Uh, yeah, first of all, my, my favorite lockdown vice was uh, Leish cream. It's an ice cream that my friend David Leishman makes, and he makes a wonderful coffee ice cream. So that was my favorite lockdown vice, but I also um, drinking this excellent Swedish whiskey. Hold on, let's see if I can grab a bottle. Here we go. Magmira Vintersol Swedish single malt that a friend sent me from Sweden. This yeah, is going to be my lockdown wine, along with Not Jacob. Isla. It's it, it's got a of caramel in it. Um, Jacob, if you if 
sometime when we meet in person, I would love to try your wine. And then that will be my next lockdown favorite wine. But I'm also, I'm loving the Hertzberg Winery wine right now, Max's wine. Um, this wine is just- Look, I'm a sucker for single malt. I'm a sucker for Isla whiskey, especially Ardbeg, Ardbeg Ugi Doll is my favorite scotch right now. It's um, smoky with a little bit of sea salt and notes of caramel. Uh, I love it. There's actually, there's a guy on YouTube. His name is Ralphie. He's an undertaker from Scotland and it's spelled R-A-L-F-Y. And he does these tastings where he drinks from his dram of scotch and he describes all the different notes and flavors. And, and, you know, it might be something really obscure, like, oh, this tastes like, um, you know, the, the, the left tire of a Mercedes S-Class <laughs> with notes of vanilla. <laughs> Do you know what, it, it, I, I, I'm sorry. I'd like this. to be him when I grow up. I've started to do this thing now because we, we started doing tasting videos of all the different wines mm-hmm. that we're selling in the States and in Israel, which is actually, I'm not going to lie, Sarah, it's pretty awesome. Should like, we do that right now? I, I, I can do this I, or I can try. What are you? You what can are tell you, me if I'm right. We can, a, we can do a little tasting. Let me pour some wine really quickly. Hold on. So, what, are you, what, are you, what are you smelling? Um, so first of all, this is the, the from the Hertzberg Winery. And I believe it is a Cabernet. No, you've got the Village, right? I've got the Village. Okay. You've got so. the Village. So the Village is a blend of Cabernet. Okay. You're right. Yes, Merlot, it says it's your Village. Mm-hmm. Merlot and uh, and and Malbec, okay. and it's very and it's very rare that Malbec is grown in Israel. It's not a well done mm-hmm. thing. That was one of like his things. So like this is how you start a wine tasting, Sarah. Okay, you show me. Look, right. First, you want to look at the color. Uh-huh. Okay, so show everybody the color of your glass. The color? Yeah, look at that. Do you see how it's red. <laughs> red? It's red. So wait, what I was gonna say is everybody has these like fancy schmancy ways of like smelling and tasting stuff. Uh-huh. So let me let me let me let me do one for you really quickly. This is how I okay. professional. Oh, the bouquet. <laughs> I smell three thousand years of history and grapes. <laughs> blood sweat and tears <laughs> like every every once in a while okay so like in all seriousness like i'll do it and i'll be like oh it smells like chocolate or it smells like mm-hmm. black pepper or like whatever and then at the end of every single one i go and i smell grapes because no one says that and it's like not proper and like i'm drinking <laughs> wine there's no chocolate in there there's no black pepper no. in there there's grapes there's so, grapes and you know 3,000 years of history. Yeah, well, that too. But you smell grapes, man. Like, and you know what you taste? You taste grapes. 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 Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm loving this. And there's, it, there's an earthiness to it. It's so. actually really interesting. There's this varietal that's very Israeli, Carignan. Like a lot of Israeli wineries use it. And I believe it's like, I could be making a false statement right now, but I believe it's one of the indigenous, few indigenous like varietals that we know mm-hmm. of even though many people argue that Sauvignon Blanc is originally from here and not from France and that it was brought over there. It's a whole story. But um, the Carignan grape is like, and the Gewürztraminer grape are like two grapes that I like distinctly like, that's that and that's that. And I, and I, I, I think it's about tasting the difference in the grapes, but how good is that village that you're tasting? It's wonderful. It's and, wonderful. You know, and it's not yes, I do smell grapes. I do smell the history. I do smell the blood, sweat, and tears of hard work. Hold on, I'm going to plug in my laptop. Un momento. I smell, I smell 2,000 years but, of hopes and dreams. But I also, I, I do smell the notes of cherry, and I taste that, and, and there's an earthiness to it. It's, and he says blackberry as well. Mm-hmm. But, but see, the cool thing about Max's wine is that you could drink it all day long. Right, it's it's there. There is a richness. There's a depth to it, but it's not heavy. It's not it's heavy not at heavy. all. I have a video that we haven't released yet. We, we will be releasing it soon, where I I chug an entire bottle of this without stopping. I'm being so much more racy than you are. This was supposed to be unfiltered, Sarah Sarah Tuttle Singer, and I'm the only. I, you haven't even dropped one f bomb. You drop oh, more. I, 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 I said sometimes people can be assholes. I did say that. Yeah, we I was preparing for like multiple f bombs tonight that we were gonna <gasps> later, we were gonna later do beeps in it to make it funny, but you, you ruined that beep. So I got a I got a phone call from the Daily Fryer today or a couple of Facebook messages. Oh. I love that guy, and he said he was on standby during this whole thing 
for he's for fantastic. Him. Aaron, oh, Shears uh, Aaron's is fantastic. Him. Yeah, he's he's great. He was mm -hmm. one of our first customers too. He really? bought, like, yeah, he bought our, our like one of my first cases of wine, and like you know, I did that so much. It was during Passover. He, the first time we met, you know, I think he was convinced to make up all the stories that I write, but we were sitting at Crave. And, and you guys are on totally different sides of the political aisle. Oh, I don't know. We, we've actually never argued about politics, but we, you know, I, I really respect him. He loves him. it. Like him. I, mean, I think he respects him. Like, really he, we, we yeah. get along. He and in he fact, adores. actually, he wrote an article about a taxi driver who's writing a book about conversations with, with me. Yeah, it's, so it's, uh, it's the prologue to the book I want to write about right. conversations yeah, with yeah. taxi drivers, which I'm hoping to publish in the next six months or so. So, um, but, but Aaron and I met up at Crave in Jerusalem and a uh, wonderful guy came by the um, Eitan who sells olive male beard balm. And he showed up with his beard I balm tins. Have you heard I about this? It's what wonderful. Is it? It's called beard balm and, and yeah, yeah, beard olive, balm. olive male. You olive gotta get him on your show. He's wonderful because he, he does like a, a drush about the the, the different smells and, and, and how it ties in with Torah and King David and with, with uh, sacred masculinity. So he was- He's there. got beard bomb and he relates it to sacred masculinity? Yeah, I, I don't know how you two happened. Maybe you're the same person. That's why What's this guy's name? His name is Eitan Ben Avram. I'll send you uh, his Facebook. Convert? Page. It's called Aleph Male. Instead of Aleph yeah. Male, it's Aleph Male. So wow. he shows up with, with his chins. Yeah, you know, and he's got different smells. So he's got. He lived in Nakhla. Huh? He used to exactly. No, now he's in Pardisana. Okay. But he had one um, one tin called Havdala and one tin called Mishkan that has notes of cedar in it. And mm -hmm. anyway, he came and and he met Aaron from the Daily Friar and, and he and did a bracha for Aaron over his beard and and, and we talked about Amalek and and the Parshat Shavua and that and. We really sat and kind of parsed out this idea of sacred masculinity and, 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 and God and good and evil and and beard balm and sniffing and I mean you, you want to talk about wine tasting try smelling beard balm it's its own art form and afterward Aaron says okay I know you don't make up your stories anymore so like, uh, you're, you're but cool. Aaron Aaron's terrific the Daily Friar is terrific <laughs> everybody should be reading the Daily Friar it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and also the the um, the Midi's feast. Oh, the Midi well. the Midi feast was good, but Aaron I think was around before the Midi's feast, wasn't they're, it? They're both terrific. They're both, they're they're both the great. Staff yeah. of both are really good people, and I'm sure yeah. they don't love everything that I write politically. And you know, most yeah. people don't always, and and yet they are they're kind people. They're you know it's great. Real menschkite over there. So. Yeah, if you don't follow the Midi's feast or the Daily Flyer, you should follow them because they are. Very, funny, very original, and um, I mean, Aaron's been on point lately during the whole Corona crisis. <laughs> He's been very funny. <laughs> like, uh, it's he, some of his headlines have been great. So, listen, we have to wrap up soon, but I would love to have you give some parting thoughts, maybe on, you know, there, there's a lot going on right now in the world. Like, we're we're kind of enjoying ourselves in our little bubble right now. <laughs> But, you know, many monuments are being torn down that have nothing to do with the Confederacy, and it scares a lot of people. Uh, and yet, then there are many it, monuments that do need to be torn down, too. Oh, yeah, no, no, I, I, I was getting to that. Like, okay. uh, I'll let, uh, I, my, my, wait, wait, what did Kanye tell Taylor this one time? I'll let you finish, okay? I'm going to I'm a, I'm a, I'm a let you finish. But Beyonce, but Beyonce had the best music video of the year. I, 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 it was really funny a couple of years ago during the Iran deal debates at a Tel Aviv International Salon when I was still involved with Tel Aviv International Salon, I interrupted the debate from the audience. I pulled a, Sarah, I can't believe you weren't there. That I can't believe that you weren't there for that. And, and cause, cause I, I remember at least for one, you and I were like at the port. We like plotted the next like twenty years of political future for Israel, and then, <laughs> and then we sat and listened to the most generic debate possible because I, I remember I was sitting next to you for the whole thing, and um, oh man, I. <laughs> 
Wow. Uh, anyway, okay. Um, no, there's a, there's a lot that's going on in the world, and uh, people are confused. Like, uh, and I think there are people that are stuck in the middle. I think there are people that are stuck on either the right or the left. There's no one. It's very it's a very fluid situation. Um, I think uh, I, I'm sure people would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, kind of where you are and, and what you think uh, could maybe help some people, because I, I think a lot of people do turn to you for advice and guidance. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think uh, we should be doing and where we can go next. And we'll kind of sign off from there. Well, I appreciate the question and it ties in beautifully again with, with Gail's question earlier. I think. For me, this is a period of intense learning and, and questioning my own history, my own background. Now, I grew up in a home really steeped in progressive values. My father was, a, was deeply involved in the civil rights movement. He was a freedom writer. He was in jail and, and nearly killed for his work. He went down, um, down to Mississippi and to Georgia to register African-American voters back when it was not legal to do so. And he was arrested and, um, and the plan was really after him. And it's there but for the grace of God that he got out okay. Others didn't, as we know. And my mom was very involved in the United Farm Workers Union. And you know, I grew up in a home where we, we sang uh, you know, Yiddish protest songs and uh, along with Yiddish lullabies too and civil rights anthems. And so that was part of my background, and yet there was a lot that I missed. And now I'm 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 learning, and I'm grateful to my friends who are helping me understand the things that I haven't seen before. And so, you know, the best I, advice I can give to anyone who is interested in this is to ask lots of questions and to um, to, to show up even when it's uncomfortable, in, whether it's in a, a, a Zoom meeting or if you're able to go to a vigil or a protest and do so safely with a you know, mask and, and social distance. And if you don't have a underlying condition that makes you more vulnerable and, and you can go out in public, do so and be there. And I think this is a really important time for those of us in the Jewish community also, you know, beyond the Jewish community to, um, to reevaluate our own perspectives, our own um, place, and and figure out how to move forward and, and build a better and more just and more equal society for everybody. It's obviously painful right now, and uh, but with a lot of listening and asking the right questions and, and standing up against injustice, I think we can really move forward and and build a better future. Yeah, wine true. helps. Wine helps, and friendships help. And friendships uh, help. in a nutshell, don't raise assholes. I'm working on it. It's not always easy. I got to tell well, you. I, 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 I'm listening to what you're saying, and, and it's very interesting for me because you know my parents grew up in the in the Midwest, and mm -hmm. um, my father's family employed many African Americans in, in Chicago, and like there's a very large African American community in Chicago. Uh, I don't feel like obviously my parents are of a different generation and think very differently from me, but I don't feel like I was ever raised to see color and, and I don't understand it. Like it's a, uh, it's um, I feel very bad for the example that's been made for so many years um, and the history that's been allowed to exist from a side and ideology that was defeated uh, over a hundred years ago. Right. It's, um, it's the biggest mistake um, the, the United States of America ever made. And it's the, um, it's like, an, it's an original sin. It's, it, it, it kind of, it, I mean, I don't believe in the idea of original sin, but I, I do believe that there is a reason why history is written by the winners and not by the losers. And that applies to everything, both in Israel and in America and everywhere else. And there's a reason for that. And we did not allow that to happen. And it's, it's, um, it's very interesting, especially, uh, you know, you and I could go on for hours about this because we were pretty much on the same page on everything. And uh, 
I mean, like if you even look at the history of the monuments that have gone up that are for the Confederacy, they were all built during the 1950s and 60s during the rise of the civil rights movement and during the 1920s uh, when, I, I, listen, I, I'd like to sign off on our live feed unfiltered with Sarah wine unfiltered with this note that we hope that uh you all have a wonderful rest of the week and that you contemplate the things that should be contemplated and mm -hmm. that you open your ears as my father would say 90 percent listening 10 percent talking and um sarah would you like to sign off with anything adam i completely agree i think that we need to know when to listen and shut up and listen and when to ask questions and when also to speak and um, the conversation is so important. Friendship is so important. And for those of you in, in Israel who are um, looking for ways to, to speak with people from the Palestinian community, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help make introductions as well. I know that you know, we, we didn't touch on this in this conversation, but that is something we, that- We can do it. We can do another yeah. one. Pardon? I said we can do another one. I hope so. And uh, you know we have we have to look for ways to make things better, and we have to be willing to take the first step and and be courageous in doing so. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help facilitate any of that, please reach out to me. And Adam, it's been wonderful to. Oh, it's always you. wonderful. I, I, you know what I wanted to do? I was thinking about just coming out to you and doing it live with you, but mm -hmm. we we couldn't work it out. So next time. Either you're coming to me or I'm coming to you. We're doing it on the couch and we're getting totally hammered. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sounds great. Um, Thank if, you. If, if you enjoyed this webinar, you can support the Israel Innovation Fund by planting a vine at wineofthevine.com.org with uh, any of your favorite wineries from Israel. And you can even support a number of different uh, very high impact, low cost uh, Israeli charities. If you'd like to find the Hertzberg wine that uh, Sarah and I are both drinking, you can go to israelwines.com. If you're in America, click the American flag. If you're in Israel, click the Israeli flag. For some of you, that seems what to be- What if you're in the UK? What are you supposed to do? You're not supposed to order wine because I can't get them wine yet. But but you wouldn't believe how complicated clicking the right flag is. <laughs> They've got good deals on scotch. I remember making for but, uh, but um, but uh, we really appreciate everybody joining. We had a really beautiful, steady audience while we did this. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Shavua Tov. And uh, also, Sarah has a coupon code on our store. It is the SDS coupon code, and the proceeds um, of your uh, of what you buy in terms of wine on Israel Wines. If you type in the coupon code STS, a portion of your purchase will be donated to ISRA aid and uh, it's a wonderful organization that actually inspired our name ISRA wines so well, I didn't know that that's wonderful and ISRA aid is doing incredible work throughout the world and also lately during COVID-19 within Israel they've been working with refugee co in my uh, communities in Tel Aviv to help um, especially help the kids stay healthy stay safe and so they're really Yotam Politzer is just an incredible CEO, great, great wonderful people. person. Great people. They're doing really special work. It's a it's a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name, what they do. So yeah, times times a thousand. Times Adam, a thousand. thank you. Thanks no. so much. And uh, thank you. For those of you turned in, it was wonderful. Thank you. And Gail, I love hearing your question. And uh, and Jacob, you too. And, nice and to Michael you. Hilkowitz was on watching. Michael, me. hi. There were a lot of people that we both know that were. And we're checking us out tonight. So it was an absolute Fantastic. pleasure. Everyone, thank you very much. Good night.